Hey, first grade, <coughs> we are uh, continuing our lessons about two-syllable words, and on the wall here I have some of our uh, trick words that are two-syllable words and some of the word of the day words, which we've kind of gone over. So very quickly, I just want to point out, as I've said before, when you have a two-syllable word, you're going to split it into those two syllables, into those two different syllables. And one of the things you want to anticipate is whether or not you're going to split it before or after a consonant. And that's the probably the most challenging part of uh, reading two-syllable words. So, for example, in this word over, we want to split it after the O. The O becomes an open syllable. When it's an open syllable, we want to say the vowel's name, O. And then this part is a closed syllable with an R-controlled vowel. So if we were to mark it, we would put a line here. We'd put a line right between the O and the V, and we would scoop the R-controlled vowel, ER. We would call this an open syllable, underline it, and put O. And this is closed, underline it, and put C. Here the word is nothing, and this is part of the reason this is a trick word. But where would we split it? Well, we've got to keep the TH together. So that's primarily the reason why I put it up here. Whenever you have a digraph, you try and keep the digraph together when you split the word. So in nothing, it really comes here, nothing. Ing, nothing, although it looks like the word no thing, and we don't pronounce it no thing. Noth is close to noth, so we would split it here, nothing. That's our trick word, nothing. I added this word, even though I haven't formally introduced it as a trick word. It is, in case you didn't recognize it, little. And I did tell you about this L-E at the end that you've got to be really careful of. We're going to split it right between the two T's. When there's a double consonant, you split between the two consonants. So this becomes a closed syllable. So we would underline this, put a C, and then put a brow over the I. This is this really is an L, it's its own syllable that you're going to learn about next year. It's an L-E syllable. Don't worry about it, you'll learn it. Here we have number, so we're going to split it between the two consonants, between the M and the B. Num is a closed syllable. You put a brow over the U, that little smiley face. And burr is also closed, and you have an R control vowel, ER. So that's what you would underline. People. Now where are you going to, where, where would you split that? Between the O and the P. And again, you have an L-E syllable here, P-L-E, L-E. And then the P-E-O sticks together. So it's a an open syllable. Well, again, it's a trick word, but technically it would be an open syllable. Down here between, now, there's two consonants here, but we don't split it between the two consonants. This is a blend that we're going to keep together. So in this word, we actually inspire. In spite of the fact that there are two consonants, we split it after the vowel. So this is an open syllable, B, with an O underneath it, and a long line over the E, meaning the long sound, the name of the letter E. And then this is not a closed syllable because it's a vowel team in the middle here. Okay. Other, much like nothing, of, er, Okay, of would sort of be closed. An other is actually three syllables. Another. So we put the an an of er. Any after the n. Any many. Again, we don't say the a quite like an a, but it is would be a closed syllable. Now we get into this, these are one of the day words, and I did tell you this is kind of what we call a compound word, because you have the word up, you have the word set. In this case, the word upset 
um, doesn't technically mean that you have a, a, an up, a set that's up. We know what it means. It means that things get knocked over, they're upset, or you're, you feel a certain way, you're upset. But if you're having difficulty reading a word that's larger than, you know, your typical three or four letter word, or even your five letter words, this is a good thing to do, is to cover up part of the word, up, and then see the other part set, making it easier to read. Here we have another two-syllable word with two consonants in the middle. And again, we can split it. We have submit. Both of those would be closed syllables, so you underline it and put a C and a brev over the U. You would underline it, put a C, and put a brev over the I. Submit, and then you would split it right between those two consonants. When we get to this word, we only have one consonant in the middle. And as I told you before, we could try and pronounce it limit, which we don't know a word like that. Or we could say lim it, and that we do know, limit. So this becomes a closed syllable right here, and the I gets a brev. This is also a closed syllable, and the I gets a brev. So that's limit. What I wanted to introduce to you today is also a two-syllable word, but I want you to notice something about it, and this is the important distinction. So here's the word. Okay, we do have two consonants in the middle, so we can split it between those two consonants and produce two closed syllable, uh, closed syllable syllables. So here we have pl a. It's going to be an a, a short a. Pl a. So we would underline it, put the c for closed and a brev over the a. Plas tick. So the, again, closed syllable with a brev over the I. So then you're asking yourself, but Mrs. Guy, you taught us over and over again that after a short vowel, CK, why is there only a C? Well, that's one of those crazy things about the English language. This is an exception to the rule of the CK. If it's a two syllable word, you're going to use just a C. So, for example, in the word Antarctic, it's multiple syllables, so the last syllable, instead of having a CK, just has a C. Two syllables, the second syllable ends with a C, not a CK. It's very confusing, it mixes people up, but that's the, the exception to the rule about the CK after a short vowel. So, once again, this word is plas. Dick, I'm not expecting you to spell it correctly, but I am hoping that you will remember this rule. So we're going to add plastic to our list. And fortunately, the curric curriculum gives us an opportunity to see this same rule again. So we have this word, and you see the C by itself at the end again, right? So we're going to split the word between the two consonants, the N and the T. I'm going to cover up this part, and so we only need to figure out what this says, and we can tap this out. Fran. Fran. Underline your blend, put a line underneath, and it says closed, because it's got the consonant at the end. Brev over the A, so we have Fran. And then we have this closed syllable, T-I-C. Fran tick, and that would be underlined, put a C and a brev over the I. Fran tick. And I don't know if you've heard the word frantic, but it appears in different texts. I don't know that we've read a book with the word frantic in it, but frantic generally you have the idea of being all wild and wound up and excited, usually not in a good way. You're frantic. So if something bad might be happening, if you're predicting something bad, you might be frantic. Oh, something bad's going to happen. Or sometimes we talk about it being in a chaotic situation. Everybody was frantically running around. So that's what kind of what the term means.
in a sentence, you might say, I was frantic when I couldn't find my keys, that feeling of, of being kind of wild inside. A sentence for plastic, well, there's all kinds of sentences using plastic. I had a plastic um, baseball bat or there was plastic bottles on the floor or on the ground. So a new rule, we'll see this again. I will remind you of that. Um, I did want to introduce words where we split um, on the other side of a single constant, and I'll do that later on. But I did want to make sure that you see this multi-syllable words ending with a k sound that's spelled with a C. All right, that's enough for one day. Um, I, as I mentioned in our reading uh, video, if you've watched it, if you haven't, that's okay. We will not have any lessons or work on Monday. That's a federal holiday, so everybody should be taking a break. Um, if you're sitting around, you don't know what to do with yourself, and you say, well, you know, I still have some work I should do, go ahead and get it done. I'll see you next week. We'll do a little bit more with two-syllable words and two-syllable words with suffixes. All right, friends, have a good break or a good long weekend. All right, bye.